Hi guys, in today's video I want to talk about books that are being released in August 2018 and for some reason all the ones that I've chosen out are actually not released until the 30th of August so there is a little bit of time to wait for all of them but I thought I would get this video up now and hopefully get you excited for some of the books that are coming out later next month. I found fewer books for August than I have for a lot of other months and I think that's because publishers are kind of uh, waiting to release a lot of books in September for the start of the Christmas season. I hate to already be talking about that word, it's only July, but that's really how it works. Um, so I've actually only got seven to talk about today, which is still not, not a bad number. If I was to read all seven I'd be pretty proud of myself. I try and do a mixture of paperbacks and hardbacks as well because I do often wait for paperbacks to come out because they're cheaper and more portable. Uh, but this month I just have one and it's one that I've read already but I didn't hear a huge amount about it when it came out in hardback so I'm hoping a lot more people pick up the paperback edition. It's White Chrysanthemum by Mary Lynn Bracht and I did mention it in one of my monthly favourites videos so I'll link that above and also in the description so you can check it out if you want. I'll just mention briefly what it's about. It's set in Korea in the Second World War and it follows two sisters who live in a diving community on an island off the coast of Korea and they are separated when one of them is captured by the Japanese military and sold into prostitution. So unsurprisingly it's a very emotional book but it was also very eye-opening and beautifully written so I would highly recommend it. Next on to the hardbacks and the first one is actually an illustrated short story by Khaled Hosseini called Sea Prayer. He is of course the author of The Kite Runner and A Thousand Splendid Sons and this book is about a family in Syria who decide to travel over the sea to seek a new life for themselves and unsurprisingly again this is a really emotional topic, um, it's very pertinent in 2018 uh, and I imagine it brings to life the devastation that has been reality for so many of these families. I have really enjoyed all his previous novels and I find him to be an extremely evocative writer who deals with uh, explaining emotion really effectively, so I do have high hopes for this one. Next is The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker, and this one was widely expected to be on the Man Booker long list, so it's a bit of a surprise that it's not been chosen, um, but it sounds like a very interesting story. It's her first novel that is set in the ancient world, and it tells the story of the Trojan War from the perspective of Briseis, who was captured and gifted to Achilles as a concubine. The description of it reminds me a little bit of The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller which is also the story of the Trojan War told from a, a character who isn't Achilles So, and I absolutely love that one so I think this one will be really interesting. And she is of course a well established and highly renowned author so I don't think there's any chance of it not being a great book. The next one is one that has actually been long listed for the Man Booker Prize and it's Washington Black by Isai Edugyan. And this one is a historical novel that is about an 11 year old boy who is a field worker on a sugar plantation in Barbados. It's set in 1830 when the plantation changes hands and the new owner is a secret abolitionist who wants to help this young boy seek freedom and they end up escaping the island together. It sounds like a very ambitious novel and I do think it will be very good considering it has been nominated for the Man Booker Prize. The next book I've chosen is actually set in a very similar time period but a very different setting, it's 1840s Edinburgh. It's called The Way of All Flesh by Ambrose Parry, which is actually a pseudonym for a husband and wife team. Uh, the husband, Christopher Brookmeyer, is an author and his wife, Dr. Marisa Heatsman, is an anaesthetist and she brings her knowledge of medical history into this book. It's the story of a medical student who becomes an apprentice anaesthetist in a time where a lot of young women are being murdered in very gruesome circumstances and this is set to be the first in a series of historical crime thrillers. I do have another Man Booker long listed book and I don't mean for this video to be dominated by that recent prize announcement but it just so happens that several of the books that have been nominated do come out in the coming months and this one is Normal People by Sally Rooney and her previous book which just came out last year, Conversations with Friends, uh, did enormously well and has had heaps of praise upon it but I've not yet got around to reading that so I do want to get around to reading that one very soon and then read this one. I've been hearing good things about this book already and I've seen the marketing campaign that the publisher Faber and Faber have launched for it and of course that's not a guarantee of quality but um, I do think it sounds like it will be very good. The blurb that the publisher put out is fairly vague but from what I can gather it is a love story about two people who grew up in the same small town in Ireland and who end up at the same university. 
The last one I want to mention is actually a non-fiction book, which I definitely don't read as much of as I would like, but uh, this one definitely caught my interest. It's 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval Noah Harari, who is the author of uh, Sapiens and Homo Deus, two other non-fiction books, respectively, about the history of humanity and the potential future of humanity, uh, which both of which I really enjoyed. This book is about how we live now and talking about changes that we can make to make our life and our world a better place and it goes into all sorts of topics from ecological challenges to the idea of a post-truth society so it is very wide-ranging. I always found his writing very convincing and it never seems too subjective. You can really tell his expertise on the subject which is important for me reading it um, and he does also bring humour into his writing a lot which I think is much needed when you're talking about very serious topics. So those are all the books that I wanted to talk about that are coming out next month. Let me know if there are any more that you're excited for. I'm sure I've missed out some. And uh, hopefully I get around to reading some this time because I've been a little bit lax at actually reading the ones that I've been recommending recently. Uh, but I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye bye.